Hello everyone, this is Elijah with the Roger Guy, and in this video, we're going to be doing a tutorial of the DoorDash driver app. If you haven't signed up for DoorDash yet, you can do so using the link in the description, or you can click the link in the top right hand card right now. The onboarding process for DoorDash will vary depending on what kind of market you are, and you'll get one of these two options. You'll either have orientation online, or you may have one in a physical location in your market. DoorDash will let you know which one of these will be the case as you're signing up, but for the most part, most markets are going off of the online orientation model, although some markets do still use the physical location. As of August 31st, 2020, all dashers are required to uh, wear a face mask due to the uh, COVID pandemic. So you wanna be aware that this is the case when you start dashing. Once you're logged in, the DoorDash heat map will appear, which you see on the screen. The way the heat map is designed is, DoorDash has certain zones that you can dash in. The color of the zone signifies exactly how busy that area is. When it's not very busy, the zone will be gray. When the zone is gray, that means you can't dash at that moment in that zone. If a zone is busy enough that you can dash in, it will have a light red color. The busier the zone is, the darker the red gets. And as you can see on the map here, sometimes if it's real busy, DoorDash will just straight up tell you it's busy or very busy. If it gets so busy that the amount of orders are exceeding the amount of available drivers, sometimes DoorDash will add promotion on that zone. Some of these zones have $5, some have $1, some have $9. That's a signal that that zone is very, very busy and there are more orders floating around than available drivers in that zone. It's important to note that DoorDash does not work in the same way that Uber and Lyft does. You can not simply log in and log off as you please. It's all dependent on customer demand. The way this works is you can sign up for a shift as DoorDash puts it, and these shifts are operated in 30 minute intervals. It's important to note that you do have control of your own schedule though. You'll have to start each shift in the designated zone that you signed up for, otherwise you won't be able to dash. For example, if I was in Arlington and I signed up for a shift in Grand Prairie, but I'm still in Arlington, when it's time to get out there and do the shift, if I'm not in Grand Prairie, the DoorDash app will not let me dash now. You have to be in the zone that you signed up for in order to dash. One more important thing to note is that if you're in the area that you signed up for in terms of a shift, you can actually dash up to 15 minutes early before your shift actually starts. So if I was signed up for a 4.30 shift in Arlington and it's 4.15, I will have the option to go ahead and dash now even if that area is not busy, meaning that it's gray on the map. If you're currently in an area that's red and busy, you have the option to go ahead and dash now without necessarily having to schedule a shift in the future. If you wanna schedule a dash in advance, the first thing you'll need to do is click on the bars in the top left-hand corner and then click on schedule. From here, you're gonna see a list of locations that you can schedule a dash in. You can filter the different zones in this scheduling by clicking on this track icon in the right hand corner. This allows you to check or uncheck certain parts of your market that you wanna see. So if you don't wanna see certain cities, uncheck it. And if you wanna see certain cities, check it. Once you have decided what zone and time that you wanna schedule a dash in, click on it. You can change the times of the dash in that zone by clicking on these arrow icons. Once you've selected the time you would like to dash, go ahead and press create. DoorDash will let you know that you're officially signed up for that dash. And you can confirm this by going back. And when you get back to the home screen, it will let you know what time and what place you're scheduled to dash in. If at any point you want to change this, just click the change button and you can go back to changing it to what you want. Keep in mind that you may not always be able to extend the end time because that's going to be based on driver and customer demand. It's important to remember that when you are ready, you still have to actually press the dash now button. So when you're ready, click on dash now. Once you press dash now, DoorDash is gonna ask you a few things, making sure you have enough gas, is your phone charged, do you have your red card, and do you have a, a hot bag? Go ahead and check everything, and then you'll be good to go. Start your dash. The red icon is DoorDash version of a hotspot. That's DoorDash saying that you're more likely to get orders if you go to that place because that's where a lot of restaurants are and that's where a lot of activity is in terms of customer demand. If at any point you need to pause your dash, click the bars in the top right hand corner and click on pause orders. 
This will allow DoorDash to pause your dash for 35 minutes, meaning that you won't get any more deliveries in that time frame. You can start accepting deliveries again by clicking on Resume Dash. If 35 minutes passes and you haven't clicked on Resume Dash yet, DoorDash will automatically end your dash. DoorDash will also pause your dash if a delivery comes in on your phone and it's not accepted or declined. Once you get a delivery request, this will pop up on the screen. DoorDash will give you some information on the request. It will let you know what time DoorDash is guaranteed the delivery will be there for the customer, the restaurant, how many items are in the order, the total mileage you'll drive, as well as how much you'll be paid. The amount you'll be paid could actually be a little higher than you see on the screen sometimes. If you don't want the request, you can hit the decline button. DoorDash will then let you know that decline this order will lower your acceptance rate. If you want to move forward with it, hit decline again. DoorDash will then ask you the reason why you're declining this order. This is part of a feedback system that DoorDash uses to make improvements on their app. There are three types of orders that you encounter on DoorDash. The first type is where you go to the restaurant, show them the name and the order number, then they give you the order. The second type is where you go in and place the order yourself. The third type is where the order has been placed, but you'll still need your red card to actually pay for the order. You'll know whether or not you need the red card for the order because when you receive the order from DoorDash, it will let you know on the screen. When you get a request that you want, just hit accept. Once you've accepted, this screen will appear. You can click the directions button to begin navigating to the restaurant. This will trigger your phone's default navigation that you've set in DoorDash. Once you arrive at the restaurant, you want to slide, slide after arrival. Sometimes DoorDash will send you another order when you're on the way to a restaurant. This is what's known as a stack trip. If you want to accept, you can add that order to your route and then you'll be routed to go pick that order up after you finish picking up your first order and you'll have to drop off two orders to two different customers. If there are any instructions that the restaurant has left for you, you can look right here. If at any point you need to call or contact the customer, you can do so by hitting the phone icon or the message icon on the screen. Once at the restaurant, just follow the instructions that they laid out. Make sure you confirm the order number and the name. When picking up the food at the restaurant, if the restaurant lets you know that they're out of a particular item and they're asking you exactly what should they replace it with, the official DoorDash protocol is to contact DoorDash support and let them handle the situation. If at any point you need to contact DoorDash support, just click the question mark in the top right hand corner, scroll to the bottom and click on Dasher support. If you find yourself waiting for a while at a restaurant, you want to hit the waiting for your order. DoorDash will then ask you what's causing you to wait. This again is part of a feedback system that DoorDash utilizes. Once you've picked up the order, you want to confirm that you have everything in the items. A key thing to check for is beverages and small items as they can be easy to miss if you don't check for them. Once you're ready, hit confirm. It's now time to start heading to the customer. Click the directions icon and it will pull up your phone's default navigation and then you can start heading their way. If you need to contact them for any reason, you can hit the phone icon to call them or hit the message icon to text them. There are three types of drop-offs that you encounter on DoorDash, so let's cover those right now. The first type is where the customer will come out and meet you at the car. If that happens, you just wait at the designated location, they'll come down, grab their food, and then you complete the delivery. The second type is if the customer wants you to go to their door and hand it to them. If it's that type, you go to the customer's location and hand them the food. If for some reason the customer is unavailable and you can't get in contact with them, you want to click the can't hand order to customer. DoorDash will then instruct you to leave it at the front door or leave it in a designated location. The app will then instruct you to take a picture to confirm that you left it in an area. Then you complete the delivery. The third type is when the customer wants you to leave it in a designated location, usually in front of the door or at the lobby. When that happens, you'll want to go to the bottom and click on Complete Steps. Once you click on Complete Steps, this will take you to a screen to where it will ask you to take a picture of where you're leaving the food and leave a casual description of where it is too. Once you've done that, you click on Completed Delivery. If you handed the food to the customer, you can click on Handed Order Directly to Customer. And then the order is complete. You'll see the total amount that you've been paid for this order. Sometimes the money will be higher than you saw when you first took the trip. Now let's briefly go over a few options you have 
that you can do in the middle of a dash. If you click the bars in the top right hand corner, you have the option to stop orders while you're on this delivery. That means that you won't receive any orders after this delivery, you'll officially end the dash. You can click it backwards to go back to receiving deliveries. You can also hit the extend dash to try and extend your dash further than it is right now. But keep in mind this option might not be available based on if there's too many drivers scheduled in the future. That does it for the delivery tutorial. Let's go over a few more details about the DoorDash driver app itself. DoorDash does offer promotions based on customer demand and also certain events. You can check on promotions that are going on in your market by clicking on the promotions tab. In this section, promotions are organized based on the DoorDash zones. It will let you know what time the promotion is going on as well as how much more you'll be getting per delivery. If a promotion is going on in your zone at this exact moment, you'll know because DoorDash will have a plus icon in that zone. It will also let you know at the bottom of the screen how much the peak pay is and how long it will be in effect. In other words, the promotion will be right in front of you if it's going on right now. You can click on the ratings tab to check on your ratings with DoorDash. This is good information to know, but according to DoorDash, the only ratings that really matter is the customer rating and the completion rating. When it comes to the on-time or early percentage, DoorDash doesn't have a standard rate to keep track of in terms of deactivation, but they have made it known that too many late deliveries excessively late can lead to deactivation. So that's also a rate to keep an eye on, even though there's not a standard, if you fall below this percentage, you're deactivated. So you wanna make sure that you complete your deliveries in a timely manner. If you wanna check on your earnings so far, hit the earnings tab. If you need to add banking information and a debit card for FastPay, click the banking icon at the top of the screen. On this screen, you'll have the option to update your banking information so you can have a direct deposit or add a fast pay option. You can add your banking information by clicking on edit details and direct deposit. This will give DoorDash somewhere to deposit your money on a weekly basis. If you want to use fast pay, you can add a debit card on the option where it says fast pay. Just click on change card to update your debit card for fast pay. And if you want to use fast pay, click the use fast pay at the top of the screen. Once the debit card has been added to FastPay, all you need to do is click on FastPay, then you can deposit your money on that debit card for a small fee. The funds should be received within the next 30 minutes of you cashing out. It's important to note that you won't have the option to use FastPay until you complete at least 25 deliveries on DoorDash. When you complete 25 deliveries, it will take about five to seven business days for DoorDash to verify your debit card. Only after that will you be able to use FastPay. The same applies for if you ever change your debit card option for FastPay. It will still take five to seven business days for them to verify that new card. You can click on the account details to update information on your DoorDash account, such as your email, phone number, or card if you need to. The red card icon lets you look at your red card and also mark one as lost or stolen just in case you lose it somehow. In that case, DoorDash will send you a replacement but you'll need to mark this one as lost first. So if that happens, you wanna click on this icon where it says mark as lost. The settings tab is where you can change your default navigation. So if you wanna change the navigation that pops up when you click navigate while on delivery, you can change it here. If for some reason you need to log out of your driver app, you can click on log out and you'll be logged out of the DoorDash driver app. If you wanna invite friends or family, you can click on the invite friends at the bottom. DoorDash offers various referral bonuses from time to time, depending on what market you're in and also the demand. So it couldn't hurt to check here every now and then. And that does it for the DoorDash driver tutorial. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you need additional help, visit the website on the screen right now, or you can click on it in the link in the description. If you found value in this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. It's very much appreciated. And consider subscribing if you're new to hear more about DoorDash content that we drop. This is Elijah with the Rideshare Guy, signing off. Be safe and profitable, everyone.